Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And I wanted to give my quick review over Love and Hip Hop New York. Um, this episode was just okay to me. Mm, maybe because Chrissy Crazy Ass wasn't in the episode. I don't know. Um, so, again, a question that I have is why? why is it that all of these men only want to work with the women especially when the men dominate like the rap genre you see what i'm saying like at once once upon a time it was the only person you heard about was Nicki minaj and even then you would only hear about these men wanting to work with women so you would think that if they really I mean, i'm not saying that when, i'm not saying that's bad but you would think that if they were really trying to get to the money that they would go out there and try to find some dope male rapper. I don't know. I just think it's weird that every time I look up, like, you have these men like the rich, the fresher, wanting to find, I guess, the next greatest, you know, the next great Nicki Minaj or whoever. I don't know, girl. Um, I'm hoping Rick does good by Janiski. You could tell she's very young. They look like father-daughter, honestly. So I'm hoping that this go around, he actually does right by her because he looks like her father um, and she looks like his daughter. And uh, the things that he's done so far, I feel like are legit. Like, okay, he got her, he got her to the radio station. He brought some, I guess, some heavy hitters to the uh, showcase. So he looks like he's trying to help her out versus Fresher is really trying to just use that girl to move into a house. <laughs> That's all I got from it. All I got from Fresher is I need to sign this girl so I can get this money. You know, so we can get so we can get into a house. Um Fresher comes into Janiski's um I'm trying to push to this review review y'all. Um, Fresher comes into let me drink some water, child. Maybe that'll help. Shit. So Fresher comes into um Janiski's uh studio session. Um he comes in, baby she seems like she has, even though she seems very, very young, she seems like she has a good head on her shoulders. Like she knows what she wants. She knows that she knows how this, this shit goes. I really think that she could take off and sell a couple of records if she keeps this up. Um, he comes in trying to tell her that she wasn't acting like a lady. <laughs> Girl, fresher. Jen, Jen, the groupie slayer, came in girl ready to take that wig off ready to take them steve madden pumps off like the last person you should be trying to tell the first person you should be trying to get to act like a lady is your bitch that's the first thing um i like jen the groupie slayer i'm not gonna lie y'all i saw the preview from the next uh I you know what? I just think what it is is fresh. He's just a trifling ass nigga, like I told y'all last time. You know, um, and he pretty much said it this episode. I put her through a lot um, these last, I guess, twenty years. I have long they've been together. So she acting like that because of that nigga. If he if he if he didn't give her a reason to act like that, she wouldn't act like that. But she's acting like that because of him. Um, now, she has her options. She could very well pick her panties up off the floor and hit the motherfucking dough and leave that nigga. But we know how that shit goes. Um, Sin and Jonathan are doing karaoke. I thought I was kind of laughing a little bit when they were slowing it down. Like, like girl, is this a video shoot? <laughs> is this a video shoot? It was cute. Um, Juju comes in. Um, dressed up. Um, that was her first time at um, Sin's, I guess, new apartment. You could tell because she, she made a comment, um, this place is nice or something like that. So you could tell she had never been over there before. I'm not, I just, I, I don't know why Juju was on the show. Like, Juju gives me nothing. Like, nothing. 
why is Juju on the show? Juju is not interesting at all. Like, at all. Like, at all. Um, uh, Erica and Safari, I don't care about, but I will say this much. Um, Erica said that she doesn't have an issue with Yandy, right? So if she doesn't have an issue with Yandy, why can't Yandy, who is, Wait, did Erica say Erica said in the confessional last last week we really don't have an issue. She said that. Um so if y'all don't have an issue and there's really no beef there, then why can't Safari invite his friend to the wedding? I could understand if it was like um you know how like if it was if it was something like Candace from Real Housewives of Potomac who wanted to invite 250 people to the wedding. Bitch, you don't even know. Two, nobody knows 250 people. And especially people that you're close to, you want to invite your coworker from five years ago. You want to invite the bitch who you stayed with in the dormitory from 2005 and you ain't talked to her since 2005. You see what I'm saying? I think it would be a different situation if Safari was just inviting people all nilly willy, all willy nilly, however you say it. But I think that him and Yandy are friends. And if you don't have a problem with Yandy, then it shouldn't be a problem with Yandy coming to the wedding. With that being said, Safari. The whole situation is really trivial when you think about it. Um, Safari, if you are lying about something this small, then no telling what you'll lie about this big. You see what I'm saying? If you can't even tell the truth about your friend, about you inviting your friend to your wedding, then how can you expect somebody to trust you when a rumor comes out that, oh, you got caught fucking a bitch at the club? You see what I'm saying? Because if you lie about something like that, about Yandy coming to the wedding, you're a damn sure lie about a cheatation happening. You see? Um, but I think Yandy should be able to come to the wedding because if you don't have a problem with Yandy and that's Safari's friend, she should be able to come in the conversation. Now, I can see if Safari, I can see if Safari was trying to invite Nicki Minaj. Girl, <laughs> that bitch ain't coming to my shit. That, you think one of the biggest stars in the world about to come to my wedding and outshine me on my day? Absolutely motherfucking not. That bitch can stay wherever she at with that man who just got out of prison for supposedly doing what he was doing, girl. But she not coming over here. <laughs> um, Remy needs to go to Miami to try to finish the album. Let me just say something. I remember I bought Remy Ma's album, uh, the one with Conceited. I think I was like, in, I had to be in high school. Was I in high school? I think I was in high school. I bought that album from Walmart just for that one song, Conceited. Um, I can tell you nothing else that was on that album. But Remy Ma, this album better be what she... All I'm going to say is Remy Ma, girl. You swear... Y'all swear that Remy Ma got bars. She got bars. So if this album doesn't give that, girl, you might as well go ahead and go to Cardi B route. Just... <laughs> Remy Ma needs to go to Miami to try to finish the album. Um, do I? Well, do, you, do you think Remy Ma was really in Miami when uh, Fat Joe called her? Do you think she was just in the studio in Brooklyn? <laughs> I think that bitch was in the. I think that bitch was in the studio in Brooklyn. Um, she doesn't want to leave the baby. Pat Poos needs to start working on his uh, music. Um, Papoose says, leave, leave the baby with me. She doesn't want to leave the baby. Um, she takes the baby with her to Miami to finish that album. Um, Jam the Groupie Slayer is packing up fresher stuff. Um, <laughs> girl, sit your ass down, bitch. You know you ain't going nowhere. You know you ain't going nowhere. Girl, you ain't going nowhere and he ain't going nowhere, girl. 20 years? 20 years. I'm sure Jen, the groupie slayer, packs freshers,
stuff up at least once a month. At least once a month. At least. And I'm being generous on that. Um, she packs his, he, she packs his stuff up and tells him he gotta go. He said he was at his grandmama's house because I guess what happened at the showcase the other night with Janiski. She keeps saying our label. I ain't never heard him say our label. So clearly this nigga, maybe I missed a part. If I'm right, clearly this nigga is feeding this woman some shit or feeding her, handing her a check. You know what I'm saying? That her ass can't cash because she keeps saying that this is our label, this is our blah, blah, blah. And I don't never heard him say this is me, me and my woman are starting a label. Me and my wife are starting the label. Me and my bitch are starting the label. I ain't never heard him say nothing like that. Um, Sin and Joe meet up at her studio session. <laughs> Baby, no question. Yes, come on, Sin. Um, this is what I, I, I always question when people just want to do stuff just because. Like, it's one thing if you say, you know what, I decided to try to hop into this singing thing. I think I have a decent voice, blah, blah, blah. But it's kind of like Jonathan, like, this is my, when Jonathan came out with that perfume, uh, show, show, did his perfume thing last week. And it's like, Jonathan, you were on the show last year and I don't remember you ever mentioning this perfume. Um, maybe I missed that episode, um, but I don't remember you mentioning this perfume. And now all of a sudden you've been working on this perfume for a year. And it's like, why? Like, you're a makeup artist. I think it would make more sense for Jonathan to say, I'm coming out with a skincare product or some foundation or some eyelashes or um, something to get the, you know, something that has to do with the makeup. But this, I don't know. So it's just like Sin has, okay, Sin, I think Sin talked about the music. No, Sin did talk about the music last year because Joe basically didn't want to help her. Um... I mean, she has a decent, she, I mean, I guess she don't sound no worse than none of the other bitches out on the radio, quiet as it's kept, so, I mean, I guess she might be all right, we'll say, do, do they look magic in the studio, um, Joe comes in, I could never be in a relationship with no man like Joe, that whole just professor, I'm, like, I'm giving a lecture at Howard University would get on my nerves, um, I guess it's just, this is what I'm missing, y'all. Is Sin and um, Joe, are they still together? Did she just move out of the house? I can't, this is what I can't remember. Did she just move out of the house, but they're still together? Or are they just taking like a break to see, to get, to get shit together? That's what I'm confused on. Are they broke? Are, are they still together or not? That's what I need to know. Um, Rick takes Janiski to Hot 97. She basically chooses him as her manager. Um, I mean, based on what he's done, I can see why she chose Rick over um, Fresher. Because Fresher really ain't did shit, but I almost get her ass monkey stomped at her own goddamn showcase. Um... Sin meets up with Erica and Jonathan. I don't know why Jonathan always feels the need to have to be right there in the middle of shit. Like, ugh. Jonathan is so messy. Um, but, because the truth of the matter is, Sin is not going to touch Erica, especially when she's pregnant. And I don't think Erica would do anything while she's pregnant either. So I really think they could have met up by themselves. Um, but whatever. The whole situation is messy. And I don't really know that much about, about Tahiri, but Tahiri, you look like a fucking idiot if you really want to know the truth because this nigga got on his knee and proposed to you on TV. What was that in Times Square? For everybody to see. And you told him no. And I know for a fact you heard about Sin and Joe. And now I know for a fact you heard about them not being together. 
And we know you know the reason why they're not together. So it's just weird to me how like you would come back into the picture after you told this nigga no, after the engagement is broken off with his new fiance, and you want to throw your booty on him, and you know that Erica is trying to, I guess, get y'all to rekindle some type of old flame. I don't know. It's just weird. Like to hear you look dumb to me. Um, I don't know why Erica really cares about Tahiri and Joe being together. It looks like I could see why people would say, Erica, you trying to piss Sin off. Because just last year, bitch, Joe was about to put Safari's face in the sand because he felt like you being at the resort was a security issue for him and his family. Y'all remember that? Do y'all remember that? And I was like, Joe. You really sitting here going off talking about I need to make sure that I um, that I have the security. He, those, these are not his exact words, but he basically made it seem as though Erica being at that resort, even though she wasn't filming with them, it was a security risk for him and his family, and he needed to make sure uh, he needs to know what was going on so he could make the right moves. So, just a few months ago, Joe didn't even want your ass around, and now you're trying to play matchmaker with Safa with Joe and Tahiri. And Tahiri, you know the nigga probably ain't shit, but you back flirting the head. I don't know, girl. I don't know. I wouldn't be mad if when, Sin when Erica dropped that load if Sin went upside her head. Because it does look like, bitch, you trying to do some shit. Like, and for her, like, I don't give a damn what my old nigga doing. Like, that's not the same thing, Erica. You could use that, but girl, your son is how old? How old is Erica's son? What, 10? So I'm sure you probably don't give a damn. But girl, Sin and Joe just broke up yesterday. <laughs> that's not the same thing, girl. And we all know that when sometimes when you break up, you really don't be broken up, girl. It's just you be broke up, but you don't be broke up, broke up. We broke up, but no, no bitch better not get in your motherfucking face. We not that broke up. We just mad at each other, basically. Anyways, y'all, that's all I got. Um, I don't know if I'm doing Miami, y'all, honestly. I'm not even going to say her line to y'all. All right, y'all. Bye. Oh, somebody told me I need to work on my... Somebody told me I need to work on my green. Because, uh, you know, I, every time, anytime I get a her, I'm like, all right, bye, y'all, bye. All right, y'all, I'm gone for the day. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Tell the kids I said, hey, tell your man I said, hey, tell everybody I said, hey, bye, y'all. That was so fake, girl.